Hello everyone, and welcome to Autocrat. This is episode 43, Atalanta. And this is one of the few female heroes in Greek mythology. Yoohoo! So, are you excited? Yes! Right, well I won't keep you waiting, let's get straight into it. Atalanta was from Arcadia and was the daughter of Iasus and Clymene. Miss Clymene is not the goddess with the seemingly very attractive feet who we kept mentioning at the beginning, but instead is the daughter of someone called Minyas, who we don't have to think too much about. However, Atalanta's father wanted sons instead of daughters. Yeah. So he exposed her to die. That's mean. The person tasked with... What with men being mean? I don't know. Are you still sore about Jason? Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Someone would tell me, move on, that's been two episodes ago, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but never. <laughs> the person tasked with killing her didn't go through with it, as we've seen before with Oedipus, but put her in a cave by a spring in a mountain, which doesn't seem that much better to me. Yeah, it's not really much better. I won't outright kill her, I'll just abandon this defenceless newborn in the wilderness. I think the text basically implies he carried out her father's orders, because this seems the textbook definition of exposure, which, from memory, Sparta does a lot of. I think I even said that when we covered Oedipus. However, not to Atalanta the grim fate of dying alone in the wilderness for literally no reason, because she was eventually rescued by a female bear who nursed her, before some huntsmen eventually came across her and brought her up themselves. When she became an adult, she didn't, in fact, settle down to have kids, but instead was a huntress in the woods. Nice. She wanted to live like Artemis in that she would stay a virgin and slept on animal skins, eating meat and drinking water. Okay. A pair of centaurs once tried to murder her, or, according to Alien, were in love with her and their intentions were, let's say, clear, but instead she killed them. Fair. She was also one of the individuals who hunted the Caledonian boar. Now, we don't have time to get into this whole story here, maybe a bonus episode in future, but basically this was a boar sent by Artemis to torment the king of Caledon, because he neglected her in his annual tribute to the gods. All of these stories are really giving the impression, please just be fair in your sacrifices, so many problems come up when you favour one god over the other. True. Among the hunters of this boar were famous names like Peleus, Jason, Boo and Iphicles, the brother of Heracles. She also got into a wrestling contest with the same Peleus at some games in honour of Peleas, Jason's uncle, and won. I think what this refers to is the funeral games of Peleus, because remember he got horribly butchered by his own daughters, but I'm not entirely sure. Bear in mind that this Peleus is the father of Achilles by a Nereid called Thetis, so this is no small fry, she's quite impressive. Yeah, she is. She then reunited with her birth parents. Ooh, that's going to go well. Yeah, given that, that whole situation, yeah. Her father wanted her to marry. Her father should have no say in her life. <laughs> it is strange that he first wants a son and then pushes her for the stereotypical daughter route. Atalanta had her own terms for this particular arrangement. She went to a spot that could be used as a race course and set up a stick in the middle of it. Her potential suitors would be told by her to race her while she was armed, from the stake to presumably the end of the field. Cordian confirms that she did in fact have weapons during this race because she ran with her sword, apparently. Now, why the sword, you might be thinking? Because I guess that if she beats them, yeah. she told them, well, then you get killed, right yes. there and there. Yes, if she beat them, she'd kill them. However, if they beat her, they could marry her. So, what do you think? Interested? Um, I mean, considering I'd be the woman in the situation, I should ask you. Interested? <laughs> I mean, I would have second thoughts about that particular level of violence, but a lot of people didn't, because this carried on for a while and a lot of people died. Eventually came the turn of one young spark called Melanion, or Hipponymes if you believe Claudian. Now, you might be thinking, this is going to go as poorly as it has done for a lot of people. However, he has a secret weapon, namely a present from Aphrodite. Ooh, what is it? It's a set of golden apples. Ooh. During the race, when Atalanta was catching up to him, he threw the apples to the ground. This distracted Atalanta, apparently she's a magpie, and this allowed Melanion to win the race. What's the deal with the magpie? Have you not heard that before? Magpies being attracted to shiny things. 
I thought that was crowds. No, it's magpies. I thought it was crowds that came to steal the stuff. No, magpies do it. Crowds do it too. Um, maybe they do, but the famous story is magpies. Okay. Anyway, regardless of which bird it is per se, Atalanta gets distracted by golden apples. I mean, it didn't seem the rules that they were on to load to do that. Yeah, I, that would be brilliant if that was in the rules to start with. Rule number one, no throwing golden apples around. Now, Melanion won the race as a result. So I guess he marries her? He does. Now, there's an interpretation by Overly Sarcastic Productions, which I quite like, that Antalanta basically allowed Melanion to win because he was the one she wanted to marry, and I've got to say, I kind of agree. Atalanta's got agency in this agreement, after all. She's the one essentially deciding her suitor by racing them, so it would seem very odd that she would throw that away for the sake of some apples she could have anyway once she won and killed him. True. And besides, it kind of paints women in a poor light the simple way. Either with Melanion, or with Ares, or else Meliega from the Caledonian boar story, which we haven't really covered here, she had a child called Parthenopaeus, who would be one of the seven against Thebes. Again, not going to go into it here, but it's basically a fallout from the Oedipus story. As we've said before, Atalanta is also one of the occupants of the Argo on the voyage of the Golden Fleece. So, very impressive life story all around. Now, there's one final scandalous story with her. Ooh, do tell. While out hunting, she and Milanion came across the Temple of Zeus. Right. At least we think it's the temple based on the wording. Yeah. There they get intimate, let's say. Ah. As punishment for this, Zeus turned them into a lion and a lioness. Okay. Now, that might seem a bit random. Why did that happen? Yeah. Well, it has to do with ancient Greek beliefs on animals. They thought that lions did not mate with lioness, but instead with leopards. Okay. For this reason, the two lovers would not be able to carry out that sacrilege a second time. Yeah. However, modern biology would kind of say that the joke is on them. Yeah. Not that hybrids between lions and leopards don't exist, because they do. They look awesome, and they're cold. I didn't actually think to look that up. The job? <laughs> that, that's their name, by the way. It's, it's, I didn't think to look it up. Trust me, I'm a scientist. However, they are very rare, and a lot more so than crosses between lions and tigers of either sex. That's why I called. do know they're ligers. Good job. Or tie-ons, I think. Good job, you know something. Thank you. There have been a few documented occurrences in the 20th century, so perhaps even this transformation wouldn't stop Atalanta and Melanion. Yeah, even if lions and leopards had been the ones that mated in Greek mythology, they can also have children, so this wouldn't stop Atalanta or Melanion from whatever it was they were doing. Let's not get into it. Well, the final thing we will say is that the much later source of Tzetzis separates Atalanta into two people. One of them wrestles Peleus and loses to Melanion, while the other is the mother of Parthenopaeus. Okay. However, it does add a bit of sweetness by seeing that Atalanta did fall head over heels for Melanion, admittedly because he tricked her with the apples. Okay, maybe she was charmed by his level of trickery. Maybe. So that is, I think, one of the only Greek heroines. What did you think of her story? I like it. It's definitely fun seeing a bit of a divergence of a woman who is not just married to someone or the mother of someone. Very Although true. she is married to someone and is the mother of someone, but let's not get into that. So, that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you all very much for listening. Again, a reminder that you can ask us questions for our upcoming Q&A in episode 49, and have a great week, everyone. Have a great week.